the 22nd of December, Simeon and Anna. Now you might be thinking, Simeon and Anna, who were they? Now the truth is, is though they are in the nativity story, they're often overlooked um, and not really mentioned because we've got the wise men, the shepherds, the angels, King Herod, Jesus is born, and he's born, that's it, done. But actually, um, at the end of chapter 2 in Luke, we read how um, Simeon and Anna get to meet Jesus as a baby when he comes to the temple. And the significance of understanding who Jesus is, was that he was a fulfilment of the Old Testament prophecies. And, and so when he is born, it fulfills the Old Testament and leads us in to the good news of the New Testament and ultimately the grace that we now live in as Christians. And what is fantastic is, um, as part of those prophecies, God had promised Simeon that he would see the Messiah as a baby before Simeon died. And so it's great to actually look at this scripture, to really just continue to actually look at how Jesus was prophesied. And that was God's plan all along, that people would know he was coming, he would come, and then the world would worship God that he'd sent his son Jesus. So let's um, start reading. We're looking at Luke chapter 2 and we're going to start from verse 25. Brief bit of context. Um, Mary and Joseph have taken Jesus to the temple to be circumcised and it's at the temple that we see uh, Simeon and Anna come into the story. This is a little bit of a longer scripture than normal. Um, but I just wanted to kind of read it because it's just really encouraging and then we'll have a look at it a little bit more. Now, there was a man named Simeon who lived in Jerusalem. He was a righteous man and very devout. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he eagerly expected the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit has revealed to him that he would not die until he has seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple, so when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now I can die in peace. As you promised me, I have seen the Saviour, and you have, given, you have given to all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and Mary were amazed at this, that this was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and he said to Mary, this child will be rejected by many in Israel and it will be their undoing, but he will be the greatest joy to many others. Thus the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel to the tribe of Asher and was very old. She was a widow for her husband had died when they had been married only seven years. She was now 84 years old. She never left the temple but stayed there night and day worshipping God and fasting and praying. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph and she began praising God. She talked about Jesus to everyone who had been waiting for the promised king to come and deliver Jerusalem. And then when Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. Now, have you ever received a present at Christmas? You've been ready for it, you've been looking, maybe... It's a small present, maybe it's a massive present, and you rip it open, you're so delighted, and you say, now I can die because my life is complete. Obviously, we've never got a present like that at Christmas, obviously, aside from Jesus. But in terms of a present that someone gives us, where we undo the wrapping and think, 
my life's complete. I am done. Take me home, Jesus. It's good to give Christmas presents, and it's particularly great when we have received ones that are so thoughtful or ones that we've been wanting for so long. But look at um, Simeon. Look at um, Anna and all the other people who've been waiting on the prophecies of the coming Messiah. I mean, Simeon had been waiting because he'd been told by God he wouldn't die until he saw the Messiah come to birth as a child. I mean, Simeon, in his role, would have seen thousands upon thousands of babies who were the first born male of a family. Um, but there was something, as soon as he saw Jesus, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, this is who I promised you, this is who you've been waiting for. And Simeon sees Jesus and sees him as the greatest gift that any of us could ever hope for. So much so that this gift now completes his life and completes the promises that God had said to him years ago. And whilst I'm joking about Christmas presents that we receive, I challenge you to say, is Jesus that present, that gift that completes your life? Because he wants to be, he should be. He is the greatest gift any of us could ever receive. And he wants to walk with you daily, knowing that you have the realization that he is the one that completes your life. That's something to mull over today. And if you can't say Jesus completes your life, that he is the thing that you've been waiting for, I would ask you to um, invite Jesus into your heart so that you have clarity that he is the purpose of your life. In fact, let's do that now. If you want to invite Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, if you want to know him as the greatest gift ever given, I'm going to pray a prayer shortly. Maybe you've been in church and you felt like you've, you've known Jesus, but you still don't regard him as the greatest gift ever received. Maybe you've kind of walked with Jesus, but you're not sure that by following Jesus, you, um, well, when you follow him and you give your life to him, you should have absolute certainty and assurance that when you die, you will be with him in heaven. If you don't have that certainty in your heart, I want to pray as well. And would you pray this prayer to invite Christ into your life? So repeat after me aloud. Dear Jesus, I want to invite you into my heart. I want you to be my Lord and Saviour. I'm sorry for all the wrong I have done in my life. And I ask forgiveness of my sins. I pray that your blood, Jesus, would wash away my sin and failings. And that I would be washed white as snow in the blood of Jesus. And that I would live my life with purpose and destiny. And that I will live with you forever in heaven. With the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, prayer for the first time, congratulations. It's the best thing you've ever done in your life, I can guarantee it. It is inviting Jesus, the greatest gift ever given, and you've now received that gift. And if you've just got prayed that prayer again because you weren't sure absolutely what would happen to you when you die, can I reassure you that Jesus wants you to know, God wants you to know, that you will spend eternity in heaven when you die. That is the promise of God. He's made you for a relationship with him, not just on earth, but in heaven. 
If you want more details about that, then check out our website, citychurchliverpool.org, and you'll find more details of walking in the steps of Jesus on our website. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.